press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Namaste children. In this class, we'll discuss about neural control and coordination. In our last class, we discussed about animal tissues, four types of animal tissues, in that epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. In this class, we'll discuss in detail about nervous tissue. We know that different organisms are made up of different organs and organ systems. So there is a need to control their functions. So Mesh, good morning. Kirtana, good morning. So this nervous system brings point to point connection with this organ and organ system to bring coordination among the functions of different organs to maintain homeostasis. So there's a main function of neural control and coordination. So, in lower organisms, the nervous tissue is formed in primitive form like in ITRA, whereas this nervous tissue is very well developed in vertebrates. It is very well developed in chordates or in vertebrates. Sanjana, Ananya, good morning. So, coming to the uh, classification of neural system, human neural system. It is classified into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Srujana, Nisha, good morning. So, central nervous system again classified into, it includes brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system include somatic nervous system and autonomous, autonomic nervous system. Somatic includes cranial and spinal nerves, whereas autonomous include sympathetic and parasympathetic. So human neural system, Nisha, Sujana, Rap, Arjunaya, Reddy, good morning. So we know that neuron is structural and functional unit of nervous system surrounded by neuroglia cells. When we classify human neural, neural system, we see their central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system includes brain and spinal cord. Whereas peripheral nervous system includes somatic nervous system, autonomic nervous system. Somatic nervous system includes cranial and spinal nerves. These cranial nerves are the nerves which arise from brain. Spinal nerves are the nerves which arise from spinal cord. Somatic nervous in, uh, system controls voluntary functions of our body, whereas autonomic nervous system controls involuntary functions of our body. Like function of our kidney. So, again in autonomic nervous system, we see sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic, it increases the function of organ when demand increases. So, now we were running race. Uh, when we run, we see that our heartbeat and also respiratory rate increases to meet the demand of oxygen required by the muscles. So during that condition, sympathetic nervous system is going to do 
function increases the functions of organ when demand increases so now we will hold ad mele enagutte the function has to be reduced increased function of organs has to be reduced that is done by parasympathetic parasympathetic decreases the functions of organs when demand is stopped that is about classification of neural system so neu nen pitko beko somatic nervous system controls voluntary functions whereas autonomic nervous system controls involuntary functions sympathetic system of autonomic nervous system increases functions of organs when only when there is demand after that demand the function has to be reduced so that is done by parasympathetic understood it is about classification of neural system and we know that different types of neurons are they unipolar bipolar and multipolar see here unipolar uni means single process is going to arise from cell body so this is a cell body from the cell body only one process is going to arise that give rise to dendrites and axon So this is unipolar neuron in unipolar neuron from the cell body one process is going to arise that give rise to dendrites and axon what are dendrites what are axons we'll discuss in this class when we go with multipolar this unipolar neurons is seen in the embryonic stage is seen in so embryonic stage means when zygote after fertilization zygote undergo repeated mitotic division to increase number of cells that cells start joining themselves to form tissues organs and organ system that is embryo embryonic development so during that time we see unipolar neurons bipolar by means divya good morning by means two so in this bipolar neurons we see two process arising from this is a cell body so one develops into dendrites another one into axon so when two process arise from a cell body the type of neurons are called bipolar neurons seen in retina of eye this is seen in retina of eye then coming to the multipolar neurons so in the multipolar neurons
cell body This is structure of multipolar neuron. Axon is surrounded by myelin sheath. nerve endings or synaptic nerves so this this is a structure of multipolar neuron multipolar neuron means it is having many dendrites but only one axon arises from cell body this type of neurons are seen in cerebral cortex so dendrites receive impulses and they transfer impulses towards the cell body then writes the so impulses from neighbor cells neighbor neurons and that then writes transmit that impulses towards the cell body cell body is having nucleus and nucleus granules from the cell body the impulse is transferred to the axon so axon carries impulse away from the cell body dendrites carry impulse towards the cell body axon is surrounded by a myelin sheath that is formed by squamous the squamous cells are responsible for formation of myelin sheath around axon between the myelin sheath we see nodes gap called nodes of ranvier that axon ends with nerve terminus or synaptic nerves so this is structure of multipolar neuron the myelin sheath around the axon helps for the faster transmission of impulses or faster rate of conduction of nerve impulse from one neuron to another neuron we know that this nervous tissue is derived from ectoderm and it does not show regenerative capacity once damage is damage regeneration is not seen in nervous tissue this nervous tissue is derived from ectoderm embryo embryonic or germinal layer called ectoderm so types of axons the two types of axons are there one is myelinated another one is non myelinated so myelinated means 
axon is surrounded by this is an axon it is surrounded by sheet if axon is surrounded by myelin sheet which is produced by spine cells those type of axons are called myelinated nerve fibers or myelinated axons mainly helps in faster conduction of nerve impulses this myelinated nerves are seen in cranial and spinal nerves whereas in non myelinated the axon is surrounded by squamous cell but the squamous cells will not produce myelin sheet around the axon so this non myelinated or unmyelinated fibers are seen in autonomous nervous system so if myelin sheet is present around the axon those nerve fibers are considered as myelinated nerve fibers if myelin sheet is absent around the axon those nerve fibers are considered as non myelinated nerve fibers or axons so the ten pairs of sorry in frog we see 10 pairs of cranial nerves whereas in human beings we see 12 pairs of cranial nerves rishi sandhya abdul divya nagarash good morning so 12 pairs of cranial nerves here we have the though so in human beings we see 12 pairs of cranial nerves whereas in frog we see 10 pairs of cranial nerves so first is olfactory optic oculomotor trochlear trigeminal abducens facial vestibulo cochlea glossopharyngeal vagus spinal accessory and hypoglossus see 12 pairs of cranial nerves so all factory first cranial nerve cranial nerves are the nerves which arise from brain amsashri gustatory s gustatory means to find the taste glossopharyngeal helps in gustatory olfactory mainly helps in detection of smell optic helps in vision oculomotor oculomotor trochlear helps in eyeball movement trigeminal helps in chewing by uh, movements of maxillary and mandibular jaw abducens again eyeball movement facial is mainly responsible for facial expression vestibulo cochlear is uh, responsible for hearing and equilibrium glossopharyngeal as hamsa shrittor it's mainly helps in gustatory or vagus is responsible for uh, vital organs functions spinal accessory controls the function of pharynx and larynx and hypoglossal responsible for movement of tongue so these are 12 pairs of cranial nerves then coming to the spinal nerves thirty one pairs of spinal nerves are there spinal nerves are the nerves which arise from spinal cord 
So 31 pairs of spinal nerves in that age are cervical nerves, which 8 pairs of spinal nerves arise from this cervix, and 12 pairs of thoracic nerves. From the thorax, we see the 12 pairs of spinal nerves. Then 5 pairs from lumbar, 5 pairs from sacral, and 1 from cochlear. So totally 31 pairs of spinal nerves are there which arises from spinal cord. Again, based on the function of neuron, whether they carry impulse towards the brain or from away from the brain, we have two types of neurons. One is Afferent neuron, another one is efferent neuron. Understood? Afferent and efferent neuron. So, can anyone tell me the difference between afferent and efferent neurons? You already, I think, read in your lower classes. Afferent neurons are also called sensory neurons and efferent neurons are also called motor neurons. Afferent neurons are the neurons which carry impulses towards the brain from the sensory organs. Afferent Neurons or sensory neurons are the neurons which carry impulses towards the brain from sense, different sense organs like skin, tongue, eye, ears. Whereas efferent, efferent neurons or motor neurons are the neurons which carry impulses away from the brain to a effector organs. Regulatory impulses from the brain is carried towards the effector organs by the efferent neurons or motor neurons. message to Afferent neurons. Amsashri, good. Sensory neurons carry impulses to brain. So from the brain, a pin chuchi the ivaga mul chuchi the a pin chuchi the pin the kove ka jagadinda anta heli a effector organ ge message to kon bara dado efferent neuron or motor neurons. That's the difference between afferent and efferent. Nisha. Afferent are unipolar and efferent are multipolar, not like that, Nisha. Amsashri, okay, motor neurons carry impulses from brain to other organs of body. Yes, correct, Amsashri. So, afferent are the nerve fibers which carry impulses from sensory organs to the brain and efferent neurons carry regulatory impulses from brain to effect of organs. Then coming to the transmission of impulses from one neuron into another neuron. Srujana, afferent neurons are sensory neurons that carry nerve impulse from sensory stimuli towards the central nervous system. S put Srujana. So, types of Synapses. There are two types of synapses. One is chemical synapses, another one is electrical synapses. What is synapses? The nerve, this is an axon. Axon ends with axon terminal. This is axon.
so axon terminal contain synaptic contain vesicles synaptic knobs contain vesicles so in that vesicles we see neurotransmitters So this is presynaptic membrane. Synaptic cleft. Post synaptic membrane. together forms a junction called synapsis so this is axon of one neuron this is cell body of another neuron with a dendrites ivaga one neuron in the innond neuron ge impulse athwa message transfer aguvaga we see a junction between one neuron axon of one neuron with a cell body or dendrites of another neuron that junction is called synapsis so this synapsis is made up of presynaptic membrane of axon and synaptic cleft and postsynaptic membrane of dendrite of another neuron or cell body of another neuron between these spaces present that is called synaptic cleft so when the impulse is um sushri gap between axon ending and dendrites of another neuron is called synapsis good so when impulse is carried from the cell body as i told dendrites carry impulse towards the cell body from the cell body impulse is carried through the axon so when the impulse is carried through the axon that impulse will will be received by the neurotransmitters present in this vesicles and it is released into the synaptic cleft that neurotransmitters again stimulate the neuron receptors present on postsynaptic membrane so in chemical synapses we see chemical substances like acetylcholine which acts as a neurotransmitters so here the neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft by this axon terminal that neurotransmitters are responsible for transferring stimuli to the adjacent neuron through this receptors present on the dendrites when these chemical uh, substances which act in the neurotransmitters are present in that A synaptic cleft that that type of synapsis is called chemical synapsis in chemical synapsis the impulse from axon of one neuron is passed to the dendrite of another neuron through a neurotransmitters through a chemical substance called neurotransmitters like acetylcholine so this is an example for neurotransmitters whereas in electrical synapses neurotransmitters are absent and we see close very close association of axon of one neuron with a dendrite of another neuron so direct transmission of impulse takes place from axon of one neuron to the dendrite of another neuron in electrical synapses there is no role of neurotransmitters in electrical 
synapses. Understood? So, in multicellular organisms, we see chemical synapses, electrical synapses mainly seen in some organs like in heart. So, that is about types of synapses. Coming to the structure of brain, we know that brain is the import, very important organ which process and control different organs functions in a organism, in an organism. This brain is protected, it is present inside the skull. So, below the skull we see three layers, outer, dura mater, so below the dura mater we see subdural space. So, then we see one more layer called arachnoid matter. So, below the arachnoid, we see subarachnoid space and below that we see pyometer. Pyometer is in contact with the brain. This is pia meter. So three meninges are there. The discovering of brain are called meninges. Outer is dura. Below the skull, we see three coverings of brain. Outer is dura meter. Below the dura meter space is called subdural space. Inner middle layer is arachnoid. And inner is pyometer. So in subarachnoid space, we see a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. We see a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, which protects the brain from shock. So below that pyometer, we see brain. Coming to the structure of brain, the brain is divided into three parts. Anyone can tell me the parts of brain? So we have, it avoids shock, is sumo, good. Cerebrospinal fluid acts as a shock absorber. It prevents the friction between the brain and the skull by acting as a shock absorber. So type parts of brain. So we know that it is divided into forebrain, midbrain and cea. Forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Yes, good. Sarika, Sumuk, Srujan, Srujana, Nisha, Abhishek, Amsashri. So, brain is divided into three parts forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain is also called prosencephalon, midbrain is also called mesencephalon, and hindbrain is also called rhombencephalon. Ananya, good. So, four brain is having three parts. One is cerebrum, 
thalamus and hypothalamus. So this cerebrum is divided. So this is from a longitudinal deep cleft. The forebrain is divided into the cerebrum of forebrain is divided into right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere. Right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere which is joined by a corpus callosum. Both right and left cerebral hemispheres are joined by corpus callosum. The cerebrum is having elevated part called gyrite which is separated by a fissure or sulci. Understood? So, forebrain is made up of three parts that is cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. Cerebrum is having elevate, elevated part called gyri. Each gyri is separated by fissure and sulci. Cerebr cerebrum is separated into right and left cerebral hemisphere by a longitudinal cleft or longitudinal fissure. So both right and left cerebral hemispheres are joined with a corpus callosum. And outer cortex, the outer part of the cerebrum is called cerebral cortex which is called gray matter. Here the cell bodies are present, cell body of neurons are present. So it gives gray color. So cerebral cortex is gray in color. Inner uh, part of cerebrum is white in color because it contains myelinated neurons which gives white color. So inner part of the cerebrum is white in color whereas outer part or cerebral cortex is gray in color. So main function of cerebrum, it, con it regulates motor and sensory signaling and also some uh, area is present in cerebrum where we cannot differentiate neurons, either they are motor or neuron. Those neurons are called, that area are called association areas. So, the cerebrum controls motor and neuron signaling, but some areas are there in cerebrum which are not differentiated, either they are motor or neuron. Those areas are called association areas mainly responsible for uh, memory and communication purpose and intersensory communication. Inner to the inner part of the cerebrum, we see a thalamus. Thalamus is main center for uh, motor and sensory regulatory areas. And below that we see hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a very important part of cerebrum which, re which is responsible for S power. This helps in need. Amsashri, good. Thinking part of brain. Cerebrum. The hypothalamus function is to control body temperature, urge for eating and drinking and hypothalamus releases hormones, hypothalamic hormones that we will discuss in chemical integration and coordination. Inner cerebrum, inner part of the cerebrum contains some deep structures called amygdala and hippocampus. Amygdala and hippocampus with the Hypothalamus forms a limbic system. Forms a limbic system. Limbic lobe or limbic system. This limbic lobe or limbic system with hypothalamus responsible for controlling sexual behavior 
expressions of emotional reactions like fear and anxiety also helps in motivation so here one point you have to remember that hippocampus is a part of limbic lobe where short term memory is converted into long term memory hagagi now repetition kotta idre enagutte bari onde sali hodidre enagutte adu short term memory agirutte when you do the repetition in this hippocampus region that short term memory will be converted into long term memory and you can re remember those uh, points for longer duration that is about the function of so the fore brain so fore brain is divided into three parts it is having three parts one is cerebrum thalamus and hypothalamus coming to the mid brain illu kelthare limbic system yavrinda agirutte limbic system is made up of deeper structures of cerebrum like amygdala hippocampus and also hypothalamus this limbic system mainly involved in the uh, sexual behavior expression controlling expressions of emotional reactions coming to the mid brain mid brain is present below the thalamus and hypothalamus and above the pons the mid brain is mainly responsible for visual and auditory reflexes to control visual and auditory reflexes coming to the hind brain hind brain is again made up of three parts that is pons medulla and cerebellum mid brain with hind brain mid brain with pons and medulla forms brain stem and cerebellum it is a second largest part of the brain little brain antanu heltevi we see convolutions in the cerebellum main function of cerebellum is to control muscular movements body equilibrium maintain madodu cerebellum it controls muscular movements and medulla mainly helps to control gastrointestinal reflexes respiratory and cardiovascular reflexes so that is about the function of hind brain so the brain is divided into three parts fore brain mid brain and hind brain fore brain is having three parts cerebrum thalamus and hypothalamus and fore brain is mainly responsible for intersensory association uh memory and hypothalamus helps to maintain body temperature as for eating and drinking limbic system again helps to control sexual behavior expression of emotional reactions mid brain mainly helps in controlling auditory and visual reflexes hind brain helps in like cerebrum mainly helps to control muscular movements body movements and medulla oblongata is responsible for controlling gastrointestinal cardiovascular and respiratory reflexes so we know that spinal cord this brain continues as spinal cord into the vertebral column through a foramen cord foramen magnum through a foramen cord foramen magnum so spinal cord is a main center where we see reflex activities that is about the function of spinal cord so this is about the brain so in detail about this chapter we'll discuss in your regular classes now we'll see the slide related to this see human nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system again divided into brain and spinal cord whereas peripheral nervous system again are divided into somatic nervous system and 
autonomous nervous system that includes the nerves which arise from brain and spinal cord see nervous system is divided into central nervous system peripheral nervous system again central nervous system is divided into brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system again divided into efferent and afferent we know that efferent are called motor neurons they carry regulatory impulses from brain to a effector organs afferent or sensory neurons these neurons carry impulses from sense organs to a central nervous system next again efferent we have two types autonomous and somatic so autonomous mainly control in voluntary functions of an organ whereas somatic nervous system controls voluntary functions again autonomous is divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic sympathetic mainly responsible for increasing functions of organs when the demand increases after that that function will be uh, brought to their normal state by parasympathetic this is structure of neuron multipolar neuron having many dendrites and one axon arising from cell body we know that dendrites carry impulses towards the cell body so in cell body contain nucleus and nissen's granules so one process arising from the cell body is nothing but axon which is surrounded by spine cell which is responsible for formation of myelin sheet around the axon this myelin sheet mainly helps in faster uh, rate of that is conduction of impulses very fast these myelin sheet are separated by each other by nodes of ranvia then axon ends with synaptic knob or axon terminal this is structure of multipolar neuron basic neuron types based on their processes so we have bipolar unipolar and multipolar bipolar by means two process arise from cell body so one is dendrite another one is axon these bipolar neurons are seen in retina of eyes unipolar neuron one process arise from cell body that is divided into dendrites and axon seen during embryonic stage multipolar sandhya neuron diagram is important it will come for five marks multipolar neuron will come for five marks multipolar means many neurons sorry many dendrites arise from cell body but only one axon is there so that is uh, about multipolar seen in cerebral cortex neuron function see your sensory neuron or afferent neuron carry message towards the brain from the brain motor neuron or efferent neuron is carry message to a effector organ so that is the difference between sensory neuron and motor neuron sensory neuron carry message towards the brain whereas motor neuron carry messages or impulses away from the brain so this is the structure of brain we see fore brain mid brain and hind brain cerebrum is the largest part of brain pon mid brain pons and medulla oblongata forms a brain stem and this brain continues as spinal cord into the vertebral column through a foramen called foramen magnum okay foramen magnum so that is about the nervous system so in detail about this again we'll discuss in your regular classes thank you thank you one and all